Well, hey guys. Um, back in the beginning of April, I ordered something from trainworld.com and um, uh, sort of a week went by and then um, I looked at the website and saw where you know shipping was going to be delayed and then I got to thinking like oh my gosh these guys are up there in New York New Jersey you know COVID's hitting them initially it was supposed to be delayed till the end of April which I was fine with they hadn't charged me I understand there's a lot going on in the world today and uh, I got a million other projects around here anyway so uh, no big deal um, and then you know sort of it got to around the time it was going to come and I went and looked uh, on their website again and this time it said you know things are going to be delayed till the middle of May and then lo and behold uh, right at the end of April this box shows up on my front porch so uh, now we got a new project to do so I was just going to kind of show you guys what uh, what this is and what we're going to do with it. So I'll just open it up here. Always packed well with these guys. Get this out of the way so I don't cut myself. Yeah, all right. So, this is a whole bunch of microengineering turnouts. There's uh, seven of them here. Um, and should be, if I remember correctly, 13 pieces of flex track. Uh, this is just Atlas Code 83 uh, flex track. And on the turnouts, again, packed really well. Everything looks good. Got some rail joiners, just the uh, standard, you know, Atlas inexpensive ones. They work fine. Um, so we've got some uh, 5B, I don't know if you guys can see that. Some curved diverging turnouts, some regular ones. Um, and what we're gonna do, we're not gonna do everything in this one video, but we're gonna finish laying track so that we can uh, we can start operating. So uh, I'll show you guys uh, kind of what what the plan is and how I came up with it uh, here in just a second. Okay, so to show you guys what uh, we're gonna what we're gonna work on this time. I'll just I figured I'd start with what uh, where we were last time and kind of orient everybody to to where the new construction is gonna be. So uh, this is the Manchester branch where we did the operating in the uh, in the first video. Uh, it came out, came around here by the trees, hits the unfinished or unscenic section uh, into the yard. You guys saw all this last time. And the last video started here, over in the engine service facility. And I indicated on that video that the uh, the track going off to the left here was merely the switch lead. And that it was just sort of temporarily uh, slapped in. So, this time, I'm going to finish uh, this section over here. Going down the, the rest of this wall. So, um, starting over here, you've got the switch lead coming out. You guys can see that. Then this line that I've kind of penciled in there, that's the main. So it's coming off this turnout, comes over here. There's gonna be two turnouts here. The main will come this way. So this line in the middle is our main, there's our drill track. And then there's gonna be a double-ended siding here. One end here, one end over there. So that should give me a good, nice long run around. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna have a the second turnout here is going to be for a grain elevator. And there is a very large grain elevator that I think has been out of service since the 70s or 80s on the James River in Richmond. So I was going to kind of piece something together that looked like that. The cars you see sitting there is just how I kind of make sure things will fit and things will um, you know, have the capacity I expect them to as I'm sort of planning in, uh, in real space here. But uh, so that'll be a grain elevator. And so there will be a train that originates over in the yard and comes here and uh, exchanges these cars out at the, at the grain elevator. And I'm, uh, you know, I'll get into more details on how I'm gonna do that as I figure it out. But for now, it's uh, you know, a train of up to six cars. Uh, we'll come here, pull into the industrial siding, do a run around, uh, switch the industry, grab its caboose and head back to the yard. So that'll be one of the trains. Also, this turnout here in front of the elevator 
it's going to come over. Let's see, I wrote DWT here. Um, so for now, I'm just going to build this track and sort of stub it here, and that'll be for the future. Uh, but what that's going to be over on this section is a over in the corner, there's going to be a, a pier, and the DWT stands for Deep Water Terminal, which is a, a real uh, branch line that uh, originated near South Yard in Richmond. And um, things like meat and fruit and tobacco and, and things like that were exchanged there. So I anticipate using a lot of refrigerator cars and, you know, just kind of, kind of some cool operations and a cool scene here eventually uh, with a pier, uh, multiple warehouses and stuff like that. Uh, so that will be... Uh, a future expansion, uh, and that will be another train uh, from the South Yard. Um, so for this one, we're going to bring our drill track all the way down and stop here. And there is room here for 15 cars. There, I, I marked where the 15 car line was, and then you've got room for a pocket. So the engine can pull 15 cars, which is at least as long as the longest track. So hopefully no uh, future frustrations coming with uh, with operating the yard. So again, this uh, this industrial siding, the third track, will come here, hit this turnout, and this will be the uh, the end of that uh, runaround. Main line down the middle. My finger went off camera there. Sorry. And so what I'm going to do is run the main around here. It's a 22 inch radius curve, which is my my minimum. I'm all four axle diesels and 40 foot car, so that's more than enough, looks fine, operates fine. Uh, and then here you see my note, this is to south staging here. So the track will go across this drop gate. And this is where I'm using those curved diverging turnouts uh, in staging. And this will open up, let me just kind of show you guys. That will be eventually six staging tracks. And then over on the other end of it, it pops out the tunnel kind of over there near where the Manchester branch came off. So again, just to reiterate uh, what I'm trying to accomplish with the package that just arrived is the track in this section, grain elevator, the run, industrial run around the main, finish the drill track uh, and this little entrance here and finish the other end of staging. So I should have six tracks there that's enough to store uh, five trains and still have a uh, open track. And the thought with the open track is, you know, to have some continuous running, uh, which uh, isn't something everybody uh, always goes after, but uh, I've got kids and uh, uh, one of the things that'll be fun is uh, for us to be able to just watch trains go by. So uh, that's not the main focus of the layout, but it will be uh, something that's possible. A few months back, or a few weeks back, rather, um, before I ordered all the track, I had uh, gone on Amazon and ordered these terminal strips, which I've used on other sections of the layout. And they're nice. They come with uh, with this jumper. Um, you know, each it comes. It came in a pack of four. I think it was like, you know, twelve or thirteen bucks on Amazon. Comes with the jumpers. Um, they work really well. Um, haven't had any problems with them. So uh, so that came. Uh, also, uh, re-upped, uh, I use 12-gauge um, wire for the bus, which is on this side of each of these, where the jumpers are. So it'll, you know, come off the ends and run off to the next one. And then the feeders come off of here, and I use 18-gauge uh, wire for that. And I come up uh, underneath the table. I usually drill a hole uh, where the wires are going to come up. Um, and then... If it's a turnout, I'll solder to the, the feeders or I might even solder to the turnout itself before I put it in and just run the wires down. So it makes it nice and clean. And I'll just show you one over here. Um, and after I do that, I'll stuff some, some towels and stuff down there just so that when I come back and ballast this, um, uh, I won't have ballast falling, uh, falling through the crack onto the floor. So you'll never see the, the foam. There's some pink foam sort of showing there where I drilled it in. There's also some of this, you know, this white um, paper towel. You know, here's a bunch of them here where I drop feeders right off the end of the, the turnouts. Everywhere there's a turnout, I drop feeders. Um, also the TCS decoders that this locomotive that I featured in the last video, um, they all have keep alives as well. So between having feeders everywhere and those keep alives, I have no issues with uh, engine stuttering or stalling or anything. Um, so, you know, I can keep that illusion of realism as I'm, uh, 
as I'm operating. Kind of the last comment I'll make here, and I'll, I'll wrap this one up. Uh, as I know this is maybe a little, little bit of a weird way uh, to do track planning. Um, what I did early on, I kind of started with the yard, and I even had track, you see, <laughs> plants on the ground. I, I'm also kind of uh, into vegetable gardening. It's too cold to put the peppers out yet. So uh, I found a place for them to, to live until it warms up. Um, but yeah, so the uh, so the yard I designed basically by laying turnouts and drawing with masking tape, straight lines on the floor, measuring clearances and distances, and kind of figured out what I could fit in the space I have. And you know, it's a pretty substantial yard. And uh, then kind of designed the rest of the layout around it. Of course, this piece here was the original module, which was actually, at the time, over on that corner over there, uh, running from there that way. Uh, and my workbench used to be there. Uh, over time, uh, as this grew and developed, and I decided I wanted to have a yard and really expand things and, and uh, was able to negotiate the real estate for the rest of this room over the garage. Um, I had, you know, of course had to move this. I built some bench work to put, to put uh, that module on. So uh, it's kind of a weird way to do uh, track design, but I tell you, uh, I like the way the microengineering turnouts work. I also like that you can go on the website and print off these templates, which you can use so you don't have to buy a bunch of turnouts or whatever till you know exactly what fits in your space. No fudging, no messing around, like it'll fit. Um, so that's been really nice. Uh, I use that uh, a lot, designing the yard, the yard ladder, um, this piece here, and staging also. So uh, there will be no surprises as I'm laying track. I know it'll fit. I kind of went back and forth between, you know, what would fit in the space versus an operational design I'd done kind of on pieces of paper and a little bit in Excel on the computer to kind of figure out, you know, this many cars will come from here and go there and sort of how it would all piece together, uh, sort of in tandem with laying the track out in, 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 the real, in the real space that I had. So maybe a little bit weird of a way to do it, but it worked for me. I I've tried doing sketches with pencil and paper and I downloaded some software and you know, that stuff works, but I don't know. I'm so visual, honestly, just starting with all these turnouts and stuff, just right on the floor uh, was the easiest, or, you know, the templates was sure the easiest way for me to make sure everything would fit and I could move things around real easily and didn't have a big learning curve of uh, trying to learn software either. So just the way I did it, there's no right or wrong way to do that. Uh, that's just what worked for me. And maybe that's something that uh, might work for other people. Uh, so I'll stop there. Um, I've got something over on the workbench I'm going to show you guys at some point. And uh, I'll also be, uh, you know, doing updates as I as I get this track laid and, and, and get the layout uh, extended. Talk at you later. Bye.